Welcome to the internet, live from the UTA Tracks Red Line at, what is this, Mill Creek? Yeah, yeah. Mill Creek. Uh, yeah, heard so. This is the Red Line Podcast. I'm your host, quote, train enjoyer Dunstan, and these are my co-hosts. Kyle Holland and Alex in the actual Salt Lake City, Utah, Hilda. <laughs> and our special guest, yeah. Next Mike Christensen. Yeah. Uh, Gavin Cotton. Gavin Cotton. Yeah, so this is the Red Line podcast on the Red Line. Isn't I that, isn't I that a funny joke? I don't know why it took us this long to come this up with this red line. I don't know, it took us a really long time. Yeah. 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 This, this could like, just be fine audio right now. Oh. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys are listening. Uh, it's look both cool. ways and oh, cross. I'm so sorry for you guys. Design. We're going to have to like, edit yeah, this. Oh yeah, I get the lovely There's, there's really powerful this. sound reduction technologies these days, so we'll be fine. Yeah. Well, and the yieldy magical trick of talking into the microphone. That's weird. Nice. Weird. 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 Okay, so, Kyle, make the news noise. <laughs> Do 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 do. Meadows. So, thirty nine thousand. Hooray! Um, in our favorite installation of the Red Line podcast news today, um, Metra has done something very stupid and bought one hundred and fifty four million dollars worth of battery trains. Hey, but Sadler's yeah. making them here in Salt Lake. But Sadler is making them here in Salt Lake. So they're gonna buy, I believe, eight two car battery powered flirt train sets to be run in service, which will be like the first official, you know, battery trains on Metra. Hey, at least, aren't the flirt ones the ones with like the power unit in the center that you can like switch out? Yes, and they will have catenaries for future charging in motion, so it's not, you know, all okay, that. So they're not, they're not yeah. shooting themselves in the foot, they're just battery. Sweet. Yeah. Couldn't they just have a long cord? <laughs> mm, I think you might be on to something. Okay, like, I've got a concept for you. It's a really long cord. You put it above the train, or maybe on like a tree or a thing, and it has like this thing that goes up from the train and attaches to it, and then you use the rails as ground. No, what they should do is like what they have on 3D printers and CNC machines, where the cable's in this like sheet, and it like unwinds, the train goes to one end, it pulls back up, and goes back the Like that electric ferry. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh my gosh, I forgot on, about that. Yeah, I, I keep it locked in my mind. What I think they should do is they should have two catenaries. You gotta and like, oh, if sorry. you're gonna talk, you gotta... Then you have two catenaries, and then, sorry, and then two pantographs, and use rubber ties. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, a trolley bus? This is a trolley bus. An inability to stay on the wire. Murray North. A trolley bus on yes. rails. <laughs> we'll, be that, we'll be the upmarket and use the uh, yieldy trolley pole instead of a pantograph, but run 79. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Wow, Murray North. North. Wow, we're making good time. Yeah. Yeah. What do you fast out? train. I'm not used Fire to fast transit. No. So this has fast been... Fast light inner city rapid transit? What? Oh my gosh. I believe that would be rail transit, Kyle. Oh yeah, it might not be rapid, depending on the customer. Well, I mean, look. Portland runs the west at like 55, so... Anyway, this has been the news. Do 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 do. My favorite symbol. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. So not I do not game. have an agenda. So whatever anyone wants to talk about, Next station, we will talk about. Marie Central. That includes it's the surroundings it's of the train and how terrible the urban form is everywhere that we're going to Hey, we can make fun today. of the storage, uh, the self-storage of Fashion Place. Oh, we can. We can make fun of the closed bridge of Fashion Place. Oh, yes. Uh, we can make fun of Murray Central. I should keep an eye out, because we might pass by the self-storage my e-bike is stolen. <laughs> oh, we're also going to pass this. by the That's Murray right. Anal Building, and which has been repainted with a different set of parts. Uh, that's more boring <laughs> They, I, they paid somebody to get up on that like, decrepit old dangerous structure and white out exactly one piece of graffiti and nothing else. Yep, but you can, uh, you can ferment work through our merch, our <laughs> anal butts and merch. <laughs> I'll explain that before they white it out the building. No, I, I did it afterwards, but I just do that with the old folks. Well, yeah, but... In memoriam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I we had to pin it pretty hard on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Vine Street. 
Wow. Vines. Speaking of, of In Memoriam, uh, non City Cast Salt Lake this week, they Marie did an In Memoriam for, for former south. restaurants that Exit they here lost. for system bus routes and front row trains to Carl's <laughs> <to laughs> <Oregon. laughs> Jr. that has become our city's tallest building. Yeah. Right, yeah. Carl's Jr. <laughs> you will not be missed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. know. I would like, you know. What's next, McDonald's? I must say yeah, that as far as downtown land uses go, yeah. that was probably the worst for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, you don't get drive through restaurants at the corner of State and Second. Um, that, that's just sick and wrong. So. It's evil. Evil, yeah. They could at least put like a building on stilts over the drive through if they want to have a drive through. Mm hmm. The, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's probably not Sometimes I just oh, agree I with people without Whoa. thinking about what they're saying. Hi. <sighs> it's flying the drone, and that's how you guys come in. Flying <laughs> the drone, flying the drone. No, oh, come over drone here. shots. Yeah, yeah come by over here. Come over here. Okay. That's a nice drone. <laughs> we have um, found one of Utah Transit Twitter's most prolific. Uh, photographers yes. here. <laughs> Being prolific and photographing the parking lot with a drone. Is this for your giant plan to build like the flat iron building on the... <laughs> on that the was Murray my Center. plan. That was your plan, my part. I beg Jeez. your pardon. Yeah. I invented that. I was the only holding person drone. to suggest That's this. Smart. I, no one I don't else know. has thought of this before. <laughs> You have to send in a legal requirement before they come after me for a height, having a weight restriction. <laughs> Weight restriction? What's the, the, what's the weight restriction for? 250. This is 249. <laughs> <laughs> You're pushing Yeah, you and the FCC should send him down. The FAA is going to shoot him down. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to scramble. Team. They're going to scramble the new planes that they have. Fashion the planes west. Hail oh this like 64 south. Yeah, just like they did. Give the worst one. I'm so excited. The worst stop. I don't know. The worst stop we've ever been to. Because like I've never had a reason to go anywhere like south of Fashion Place. I have no idea what's there like in Daybreak. Um, well, Probably even more sad. There's ski bus connections south on the blue line. Um, there's, some, there's a couple nice spots in Sandy. Uh, that's about it on the blue line. It doesn't go to work, so... We are gonna go on the fastest section of tracks tracks, though. 65. 65. Yeah, we'll pull yeah. out the... We'll the uh, what do you call it? GPS. Yeah. GPS put on our yeah. I'm excited. This is my second time going to Daybreak. Uh, ever. Oh, it was yeah, the first, first time, time was with Zaka. Yeah, we had dinner with Zaka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> going to Daybreak is a bit of a stretch. We're just going to look at it briefly. All right, come sit over here okay. because Sophie, Alex, and I are all wired in. But oh, nice. you and Gavin get a share mic, and uh, Mike and Jacob get a share mic. So just oh, wow. you know, I don't have like any like interesting thoughts. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Next discussion topic, Salt Lake City getting three new trains, question mark? <laughs> Hopefully. Are we referring to the uh, FRA long distance study? We oh, are yeah. referring to the FRA yes. long distance study. Well, then I'm going to plug the fact that uh, Building Salt Lake uh, dropped my article on that t today. Wow. So Cool. Published like, author. Yes, yeah, published it's, author. It's, it's retweeted in the podcast feed, but you're gonna have to go a ways back by the time this is out. It's so screwed so. up. You're yeah. like, like a real like person who works in the industry, and then we're just like some guys. And Mike, Mike's yeah. pretty famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out here. That's like I said at Swarm Whoa, the other day. I Mike has been team. doing transit advocacy longer than most of us have been alive. True. That's. Yes, that's yeah. true. He's the OG, so. Fashion Place West. Yeah. And yeah, that 64 I, South. does kind of make me feel old, though, but <clears throat> whatever. Exit here for UTA system bus routes and Are blue line trains to Draper. True. Wow, look, a prime transit accessible oh. Oh, yes. storage. Transit accessible storage. <laughs> yeah. storage. Well, that was a truly yeah. disgraceful build. Transit oriented <laughs> extra space storage. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You know, the convenience. Th there's probably like uh, someone out there who commutes to that. Well, there's probably at least <laughs> one, one guy. One the one guy in the office right there. Yeah. Who drove. Look, if I worked, <laughs> right there. if I worked there, I would take the train. But if I worked anywhere, I would take the train. So True. it's not really a good comparison. Oh, it's up. Yeah. Hello. Oh, we, oh, we have oh. another person joining us. Oh, this is Hi, quite Lynn. a big group. Okay. 
We got um, Sophie, Alex, and I are wired in. Um, we got a mic over there and a mic over there, so just you know, talk into it. Yeah, if you want, Perfect. if you want a mic, hold it up before you talk, because otherwise they won't be able to hear you. Uh, we've got. Uh, you haven't heard me like the whole video. time, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, but anyway, we were discussing the three potential new trains that Salt Lake City may get under this new FRA-like well, concept map. It's it's two. Is it always two? Two, two right? new additional, so we would have three long-distance routes total. So do we get to go all the way to Portland and Seattle? Yes. Sweet. And to Las Vegas and Los Angeles. All right. And two additional Next ways station. of getting to Denver. Bingham all right. All right. Sweet. Sweet. Yes. I think that that's kind well, of the... Well, it probably would be faster going, going across southern Wyoming. But otherwise, it's the same route uh, okay. across Colorado. I think that the really impactful thing there is that we're going to have three trains a day to Denver instead okay, of like one a train a day to Denver. <laughs> no, they might yeah. like schedule one at like I don't know hour. midday. <gasps> yes. <laughs> Crazy. Shocking. And, uh, yeah. Denver would actually be a good place to run an overnight route. Yeah. Yeah. I have like, to be I don't, honest, I, I haven't been keeping up with the transit stuff in Salt Lake because I've got my own demons to battle. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> oh, we just went through the, the subway, the only, yes, the only tunnel. <laughs> the only tunnel. Yeah. yeah, like, you know, like, I've been to, to Union <laughs> Station before, and whenever I'm there, I'm just like, you know, they built all this so it could service, like, uh, two trains. Tra <laughs> yeah, and, like, you know, I don't know. Honestly, I think it's more just for the people who live in Denver. Oh yeah, yeah. but like still. Like, yeah, it's a you nice can take the super useful RTD commuter rail trademark. Oh, that is true. It is an RTD commuter rail. <laughs> yeah. It's you can jealous. go on like a line to like the airport, and then there's like three other yeah, lines. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share <laughs> this with right you. here. Is, uh, yeah, we're gonna share. It'll be fine. This is actually a really exciting part right here. This is actually where the freight trains that go on the red line. This is where they all load. I know too much about this railroad, but <laughs> this is like the first time I've been on this portion of the railroad in the daytime for like a year. Like, oh, nice. I, I'm always out here at like 12 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, and I only keep tabs on the Blue Line freight trains, none of these ones. So Not, a track Not a tracksomer. Not a tracksomer. They're very rare. Like, yeah. the Red Line train gets like two trains a night on it. But I don't know. We're about to see them somewhere. The campus shuttles, man, <laughs> they really have fun contracting out maintenance for those. Thomas built life uh, high floor transit buses for <laughs> freaking campus. There buses. they are, right there. Yeah, a really high quality oh, University no. of Utah. Oh. So oh, actually, hearing. I'll point this out. So this is part of the red line. Yeah. If you look right here very closely, you'll see the freight right there, where it merges onto the UTA tracks red line. Cool. Right on that switch. We're gonna right get there. like a really wow. horrible Joel here in a minute. So. All right. See, I always saw the, those uh, decked out locomotives from the front runner side of stuff, and I'm like, okay, yeah. what's the short line doing over here? Yeah, they go deliver. Oh, I, I don't know why I can say legally, but <laughs> know, they deliver stuff to customers I have, on the red line. Yeah, they go to customers on the red line. Uh, near daybreak, they go to Bagley Industrial Park, and Bagley. then. On other days of the week, they go out to West Valley to the Frito Lay site, where they also oh get rocket motors yes. sometimes. Isn't the fake cool. the fake Google headquarters? <laughs> Isn't there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't there also a destination like just south of city, uh, West Jordan City Center, oh, where yeah, it turns yeah, yeah. off? Because they go to they go to this construction company every single night before they do anything else. And then Utah Railway, they also run on this line, and they go all the way up to Kennecott and Ida. So oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're the ones that got took over by Genesee, Wyoming, like back in 2001 right, or something right. like that. Which is why they have that god awful livery. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and if anything, the Red Line branch is a good place to have freight integrated because if there's going to be a place we're not going to have night service, this is probably it. It probably will be. Yeah. This is the commuter, yeah. the commuter line. It literally. The most know. commuter rail track uh, line. I mean, they're all commuter like, rail, like. I mean, like, I guess like the Green Line isn't really commuter rail. That's the only one. <laughs> I don't know if you would call the Blue Line commuter rail because unlike the Red Line, it connects to things that were there before it was built. Well, and also if you're ever like riding the whole length of the Blue Line, um, you'll notice a lot of people just taking local trips in, in like around Sandy and even north of that too. No, that's one of my favorite things about the Red Line is that Sandy of all places ended up with, 
with what is basically like the world's crappiest metro service for just like <laughs> three stations and you can hey, you know visit our this is like the baltimore subway it's like you can visit like two parts of sandy but you can get there really fast <laughs> yeah it's like is this Whoa, uh Gardner. Gardner. Yes, it is Gardner. historic gardener yeah. show on my childhood yeah, same here. <laughs> finding, all the, finding all the witches that they had. Oh yeah, for Halloween. yeah. yeah. That uh, Halloween celebrations. Okay, always good. no, tell me more about that. I don't know what that is. I'm not from here. So, oh, oh but, uh, I, historic yeah. garden. So, <laughs> sorry for Halloween. Well, they do a bunch of stuff for like uh, holidays, but for Halloween, they'll have like a bunch of witches that they'll have like decorations and stuff, and they have like a treasure hunt or whatever. You try to find all of them and you'll get like ice cream or something. I don't know. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Lore. I don't remember too much about it, but it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Good. Oh, wow, I'm like learning the, new things about Utah. The path cl- connection at that far end of the platform. Go straight to the Jordan River Trail. It's a good photography spot. Take you a picture. Kyle, if you're going to, po- if you're going to point at something, take a picture. I may just have to fill, ride this and film it later. Okay, fair and enough. We can take pictures on the way back. On the way back. Yeah, we can film on the way back. Oh, yeah, we, we can. Over there. over there. That, that's like I did that with the de- like Denver footage. I'm sure, no one, I'm sure no one has ever noticed yeah, our footage like going backwards if you watch it on YouTube. What is with the I can confirm that that never problem. happens. Yeah, I definitely didn't have enough footage, so I didn't just reverse the Denver footage. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I'm going to the airport. Redwood Road. So yeah, this is uh, the art you were talking about earlier. Uh, I think it's Builders First Source as the company. Uh-huh. They're super active. They, I guess I'll have the mic. They're super active. They they do like a run every single day. You will see a train right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. No better way to ship lumber. <laughs> As a, as a lumber expert, <laughs> so the the thought just occurred to me that if West the California's Jordan effort took a long Redwood took a wrong Road. turn, it could end up in daybreak. It could. Uh, <laughs> I'm not with not local being bus route. Uh, <laughs> further a step ahead. No. Oh yes, yes. The only good bus connection on the entire red line, the 217, <laughs> is here. <laughs> oh no, I said the 218. Oh. Which is, God's worst bus route. <laughs> uh, because why, can't, why, why would we have good um, bus Frequency. service in the South Valley? What do you need that for? I don't know. They proposed People that one bill like that was like to <laughs> redistrict the funds of UTA. I, I haven't looked at it all. Oh, time. I haven't looked at that. No, either. Mike, were, you were at the Capitol when they were having that hearing, were you? Or I, I was actually up at the Capitol for uh, some advocacy to request uh, some changes in the appropriation so that uh, rural left. transit would Sugar get more. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. But yes, transit in the four three five. But uh, there, there was a bill that was proposed by one of the legislators out in the southwestern corner of the Salt Lake Valley. Um, she was very concerned that uh, her constituents in Bluffdale, Riverton, and Harriman were not getting their fair share of transit funding that is raised through the, the sales tax. Yeah, that's fair. And it's kind of indicative of a bigger issue where a lot of people think that the suburbs fund Salt Lake City nope. when the reality is the exact opposite. I believe and Jay Fox had to get up there and be like, that's actually not true. Like, Salt Lake City generates like 30% of our entire revenue and actually receives less service than 30% of our revenue. So yeah. 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 And Sugar Factory Bluffdale, Road. Harriman, and Riverton together contribute less than 2% of <laughs> UTA's <laughs> revenue. So it's kind of like there there are some big questions that like need to be looked at in terms of uh, should we look for other ways to fund transit? It is interesting that we're actually doing this analysis because I believe in the past UTA has only like equalized service and income at the county level because that's where their option sales taxes come in. Yeah. So. If that bill had gone forward the way it was originally written, it would have improved it would have brought more funding to, to salt lake city <laughs> no, but no. yeah Based. But now Based. now they're like Stations, looking at places yeah they are no. a bit of a stretch. i mean I obviously we need yeah. 
Next Obviously, station, we need better transit Florida in the Avenue, South Valley. Like, desperately, like, I am of the opinion that, like, a daybreak daybreak parkway station to crescent view station bus line running over 15 minutes would be like a huge winner in terms yeah, of ridership yeah, oh yeah. Station, not to mention station. all the other places but like you know maybe don't try and rip it away from the place where people are already riding i don't know yeah <laughs> it's not a zero-sum game we could get more no. funding like salt lake city already proactively directly funds uca service in salt lake I don't see why we can't come up with funding models that work for other places. Draper Mayor Troy Walker, fun transit in your city. <laughs> no, all he, does, all he does is whine about the point. Yeah. He's not yeah. really like an action kind of guy. More of a just sit there and... It's because he's a suburban mayor. Yeah. The, the other issue that's kind of like the 800-pound gorilla on the train with places like the southwest corner of the Salt Lake Valley is that uh, it's very sprawling and oh, yeah. not walkable and anti-walkable either. yeah it, it's been designed with the intention that everyone's going to drive there yep. and places like that are very difficult to effectively served by transit you can't so, have your anti-walkable cake and eat it too exactly <laughs> yeah so the like the result is that you end up with a very high cost per rider to yeah. get people on and transit. i mean you can pull that off it's kind of the canada way of doing things just run a bajillion but you buses have to, all the time everywhere you yeah. do have to remember though that canada has very different funding West. models for public transportation than we do like you know uh, the funding for Edmonton Transit or Calgary Transit, for example, come directly out of the city budget and the provincial budget rather than being necessarily funded by a sales tax or how we like to fund it here. So, I mean, you know. Maybe do that. <laughs> I don't, Draper Mayor Troy Walker, allocate some money for transit, you can get a bus. Taxes and Draper. <laughs> ah! I'm curious to hear more about the 435 meeting because I, uh, I haven't been able to go any to any of the online meetings and yeah. I didn't come down for it. So There is a group called United Today Stronger Tomorrow that is, a good way to describe it is it's uh, funding coming from people in blue states right there. to help people in red states to pretty curve. do things and, and advocate for more services that, that that are kind of often lacking in red states. <laughs> so uh, one of the, the initiatives that they've been working on is realizing that uh, we, we have pretty good transit along the Wasatch Front sure. in the, the 801 slash 385 area codes. But when you get out into not necessarily rural areas, but just out of but like, just like runner, right? yeah, pretty like much. Out, outside Tremonton, which is basically the four three five area code, and uh, yeah, there's there's not a lot going on. And, well, I mean, and I I, I don't want to like diss on um, Cache Valley Old Transit Bingham District or, or <laughs> Park City Transit. Well, or, Cache Valley and Park City are lucky in that they have functioning transit yeah. districts. Uh, yes, but one one of the big issues is that there is n almost no interconnecting transit that connects between. <laughs> Don't get me started. The bane of our existence is the lack of a Logan bus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my existence, and the I mean, there there is the Route 107 that that connects uh, between oh, yeah. Salt Lake City and Park much. City. <laughs> But it is like five times woefully a day. inadequate. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's that's a big issue, and uh, we do have some inner city services, but they are way overpriced. Uh, Salt Lake Express. Like yes. Forty two dollars to get the Logan from Salt Lake City on the Salt Lake Express. Yep. Forty two dollars. Yeah. That's yeah. cheaper than that's more expensive than gas. Yeah. 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 That's more expensive than that. Is it 42? It's 42. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's lower than I thought it was. Yeah, like our private operators will always have, always have their niche, like running the Salt Lake to St. George route in the interim before we can get a train there. They do pretty well at that. I gotta say, they do a good job. People use it, people like it. But they're not set up to run every sort of route to everywhere. Like, they, they're they gonna have a hard time running this. I don't know why they have a hard time running the Salt Lake. 
Plug, and that one seems like a pretty good route. But there's a lot of routes that you just don't make bank by just showing up and being like, high bus ride. Yeah. Or like, I don't know, I like living like on like the south end of like Utah County, like the big, like we have, you know, it's part it's of, weird like, how much different of a noise area, it makes when it's like, going 62 versus 55. Is, like, you know, very minimal. Like, I think there's like one or two bus routes from Spanish Fork, and it basically makes like actually like commuting from that up to like say Provo Central or something like basically impossible. UCA is like wow we put a bus we're done right? And it's weird because like you know like Provo like that area is generally like you know fairly well serviced and like UCA it would, when they see a university. <laughs> yeah it's like there's something there that like you can really easily connect to and there just like isn't really any like strong connecting network and they're like, wow, no one in like this area uses West. transit. It's Old crazy. I believe that coincidentally, this is the least used UTA state, or maybe not coincidentally looking at the land use, but I think that this is the least used UTA <laughs> oh station. Yeah, they're coincidentally. They're using it for uh, bicycle, bike riding, right? Yeah, now. They're, they're motorcycle they're... licensing. There are, what, so. six cars in the park and ride? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is a Saturday, but... It's a but huge park and there, ride. There are six motorcycles doing figure eights through the parking lot right now. <laughs> this so is, so that, is, is this what they tell me what public uh, space means? Motorcycle yes. figure eights over here, so... Stop this. has never had hey, service before. At least, at least Oh, I don't like that. I'm going to film some of this. <laughs> You're going to film the motorcycles? <laughs> the motorcycles yeah. Oh, they're not doing anything. Oh, they're you learning. Know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they got all the cones. That's actually pretty cool. You see, like, that's how you know it's a useful, like, well-used parking lot when you can, like, uh, train people how to drive in it. Uh -huh. My dad trained in every LDS church parking lot in the entire, oh, yeah. in the entire state. Um, well, I would like to announce that I applied to be a bus driver for the Cash Valley Transit. <laughs> no shit! Is that the only oh, company that pays oh, a living yeah, wage? Everyone, <laughs> everyone salute! Everyone salute! So, wish me yeah. luck. Uh, they pay 20 an hour, which is $9 which, more than I'm getting now. Yeah, Cash Valley dollars is not that bad. It's w really good, in my opinion. Uh, so, hopefully, pray for me. Um, <laughs> alright, alright. Yeah. Good luck. Wow. I'm legitimately very impressed by that. Oh, hey, this is the intersection where our roommate almost hit a train one time. Oh, yeah. Uh, he ran a red light at He ran a red light at And he looked speed. out his window and a train was just on coming towards him. He was like, oh, shit. And he made it out very luckily. So, you know, kind of a skill Southland. issue on his part. But... <laughs> also, I really don't get why this is median running instead of, like, side running or or like 50 feet away Please from the road, right? Because the reasons. Because we're creating a new downtown here, trademark. Is this going to be Daybreak uh, second attempt? Yeah, the Bees Stadium will be like right over there, Daybreak I believe. Daybreak part two. Yeah, it's... Uh, they should make it right next to the track. I will say like... Like, have the door I, right I mean, like, there's nothing here, but the station looks plan. kind of they, pretty. They, they, they like should the... build the stadium what? on top of tracks. Yeah. Just have it go under. And they'll have the force again. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're talking. Salt Lake City. Or like how the light rail goes under the um the convention center in Denver. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, they could have trenched this. Like, there... Where was it? I think... Is it Slovakia? There is a soccer stadium that has a tourist train that goes between the bleachers and the field. <laughs> <laughs> right, I saw that. Was that a Tom Scott video? No, it wasn't Tom. I, Tom Scott might have done something. Did he do that for the Oh, I love this. The U Stadium. Yeah. Like, you just, like, ride the train and they just, like, put you in the stadium. I don't know. That'd be funny. <laughs> well, that would be funny, honestly. Irk yeah. McGurk, everyone. We're in Daybreak. That was quick. Oh, wow. It's actually faster than driving, I think. It is fast. It is. Yeah. No, the, the red line is faster than driving between most places on the South Jordan line and downtown areas. So Even to the U after the straight yeah, line section. Yeah, going to the U is, I think, faster on the red line just by a little bit some days. Yeah. At the very uh, least, it's consistent. You can I'm a there. nerd, so like I've looked at like the ridership by stop, and this is the only stop south of like Central Point that gets any ridership. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tracks. That Other tracks. than like a few places on like the Blue Line, Thank like. You. Thank you. It's crazy. They built housing by the transit, and then people rode the train. Whoa! <laughs> and it's like the. Are they building the the Bees Stadium right there? Is that I what they're building? So. Oh boy. I'm not sure. Huh. 
Are they, they going to keep all Yeah, so what I've heard is they're going to build the stadium right there and they're going to put a, they're, they're going to put an infill stop right like over there by Lake Avenue. <laughs> I forgot about their cursed oh infill stop. What do you need an infill stop for on the daybreak line? You do not. No, you do you not. Don't. They, they well, it's because, the it's because buses are evil. Well, yeah, oh, so like, true. And so no, is walking for more than two like, feet. The southern part of the red line has like, you know, massive ridership, always like super crowded when you're going south to like daybreak. <laughs> Why is this it needs still... more infill. That's County Library. Library. Daybreak Bridge. Yeah, let's just. Let's, let's, uh, it's it's actually quite a good. I have to say, the in building the ugliest the library of all time. All right, let's go take a breather. Right now. Back in seven minutes on the other end of the train. Oh, are we not like. <laughs> well, we gotta go and stay in the back end. That is a good place. Let the person, operator like, have their piece oh. of quiet. <laughs> What? Yeah, someone just Please texted me right now. Oh, yeah, I was wondering how it easy it is. Yeah. Oh. And I have to tap off and tap back shelter. on again. <laughs> I promise that I ran to the station, so I forgot to do it. I think your fare is technically still valid. <laughs> yeah, but I want the riders. Whoa. Oh, Real okay. What are they cleaning? Oh, I forgot about the painting thing. Yeah, that's funny. That is funny. Wow, beautiful daybreak. It's a beautiful day in the daybreak hood. Do, 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 do. I think that, like, and... Neil Armstrong, right, when he saw the moon was like, beautiful oh. desolation. This is <laughs> not beautiful desolation. This is ugly one desolation. One desolation. We can dice it up later. <laughs> you got it. All right. Get the up here in time. Maybe not. I don't know. You can try. I'm going inside because I'm cold. Yeah. 11.54 in six minutes. Oh, what, to go to the library? Oh, I get to sit backwards this time. Yeah. I give Alex the window seat. He's filming. Oh, you're filming. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to film. So. Scroll fingers in. <laughs> and then we can run the footage. Let me pull up for the, the other way. Uh, Logan City Library. Oh. Oh, you need the footage now. Yeah. This is really like, no. it's a really sophisticated way of doing it, you know. Well, you see, if you put the lens right on the window, how, how it removes like all glare. It's oh, beautiful. <laughs> it works alarmingly. Isn't that well. hideous? <laughs> the Logan oh, City Library in that then building. No, you don't get it. It's beautiful urban. <laughs> yeah. It's urban form. It's, I don't think it's there's like, going to be a like door. Well, neither of them are podcast budget ones. We just found them. And neither of them are very it's good. kind of a windy day I to do I it. I want to budget no, by like a like, like, um, hero black or something. You know what's going to be nice about yeah. filming both Oh, wait, like $3 a month, Ooh, like, it's, it's not keeping you guys alive. Out. Wow. Wait, no, reverse. <laughs> it reverse. doesn't matter. Ah, okay. we, we did splurge a little bit on the upping the number of recorders we have before in advance of this. Wait. Kyle, if yeah. we both film vertical, we can do a side by side. Oh, I'm filming. This is just, <laughs> this is this is landscape. Okay, my good. phone's just kooky. Okay, if if we yeah. did vertical though, we be... we could do side by side. <laughs> I was thinking we could just do you know cuts at the right time, but that works too. I don't know. Okay. I'm feeling a bit. Well, a bit look, our today. operator. Cool. So we are like single-handedly boosting Saturday ridership on the <laughs> Literally. Yeah, we're carrying it. Uh, well, when, when we do Slurm next week, we're, we're really going to throw off the Provo to Salt Lake numbers. I'm really hoping that we don't like make the Amtrak conductors mad at us because we're going to have like oh, no. 10 people. I did it twice. Oh, the, yes. and the first time they were just utterly confused and the second time I was like, yeah, get on. You're a foamer. Um, get on the damn train. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. One, one time, I've, I've done it maybe like a half a dozen times. One of the oh, times, wow. uh, <laughs> like the, oper the, the, the conductors like you know, it's cheaper to just take front row. <laughs> yeah, but this is more fun, okay? This <laughs> front row have 48 inch seat pitch, didn't think right, so. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then, like, another time, I took a date with me. Oh, and they no. saw, the, they saw the date, and it's like, Ooh, oh, la, la. you know, having fun. And, <laughs> yeah. It's actually one of my dream dates is to do the Provo to Salt Lake City run. <laughs> like, amazing. and then get some Am Snacks and, like, you know, <laughs> sit in the lounge car. I think that would be really good. That's a good idea, actually, yeah. Well, um, if, if if it's on time, they, they usually oh, don't close until 11. 
<laughs> but yeah, depends on how late it is. And they and they keep the the upper levels open the whole time. Yeah. So. Uh, my biggest regret riding all the way to Grand Junction was not going in the cafe Junction? Car. You didn't go in the cafe car? I didn't know. What? Oh my God. <laughs> How could you, you not? I went to like the cafe car like seven times when I was on my way to Chicago. <laughs> I ate too many Amtrak hot dogs. <laughs> yes. I love the full service cup of noodles where they make them for you. <laughs> I had, I did dining on Amtrak one time. It's really expensive, but it is quite a fun experience because they have like all the white table in it. It, yeah. it really is mostly yeah. just with sleeper like, car passengers. Cake. It's really nice. I did and Seattle too, it was Oakland, uh, back in November, father son trip, and we had uh, the Amtrak steak, the ham steak. I don't know whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> the ham steak. I don't know yeah. what it's the called. Steak's good. You know, during the Trump administration, they were looking at the Trump steaks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but oh, yes, okay. I I Welcome aboard. This train will be leaving shortly. Hey. Whoa. I uh pretty much always ride in the sleepers. So <laughs> yeah, cuz actually Amtrak could do a better job advertising the fact that the food is included yeah. in in the that's price a, of your ticket when yeah. you're yeah. you really are paying for the services yeah yes so that's that's one of the reasons why it's expensive to ride in the sleeper because it's it's all inclusive i wish i could buy a sleeper ticket without the add-ons <laughs> <laughs> there was an alan fisher twitter rant yesterday i don't know if you saw that but oh, there's like a semi-viral tweet that came out i was like why are the amtrak sleeper cars so expensive and then alan fisher went for like 10 tweets about all the services that come in and uh -huh. subsidization and lack of uh, supply and all that. It's, it was interesting. Yeah. A quick check before we depart. Everybody over there, look at your recorded screen. Make sure it's still, you know, counting yes. up and the bars are doing something not unreasonable. Yeah. 4507. 56 seconds. Whoa. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That's what we're I'm at 3956, exactly when you said that, so I'm exactly one minute behind you. Because you're I'm at 4330. I'm at 4520. Yeah, wow, that okay. microphone started before the training mm. came, so. <laughs> yeah. I got some Patreon exclusive. Patreon yes, exclusive train noises. Random train noises from Central Point Station. <laughs> Great. For the, Patreon, for the patrons for the who missed wants. that second. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this whole episode's been <laughs> we'll see how it comes out in post. Speaking of what, what the people want, I was at a meeting yesterday where we were talking about, well, we, we had, um, oh, and I just forgot his name, the guy that is the executive director of the Seven Canyons uh, or Seven Creeks Foundation that is trying to daylight all of the oh. streams and he was doing a presentation well in general about the work of the nonprofit, but also like very specifically about the improvements that are planned along the Folsom Trail yeah I heard about the Folsom one yeah and uh, like one of the things is they are having seating that specifically faces the railroad line so that people can enjoy the trains going by and uh there there was there was someone in the audience that was like what like why why would anybody want to sit and watch the trains and i good audience member you must have never been on the internet before yeah exactly i'm like they clearly have never heard of foamers and disappointing <laughs> You know, we need a phone, you know, there's like, and I can say this because I'm gay, right? There's Pride Month, right? <laughs> but Joe Biden's woke agenda is excluding the foamers. And they, we need foamer awareness month, so all the people can know about foamers. No, but oh, yeah. I think there's like, I don't know, like gay people and like weird like train nerds. There's like gay people and weird train nerds. There's like a 100% overlap between those groups. So like, I don't know, like, I feel like we could share the month. <laughs> I gotta say, once you figure out how to be a functioning member of society, it's, it's kind of like a, a speed slope downhill from there. Yes. Yeah. And all the rabbit holes. Well, there, there are those who identify as train sexuals. <laughs> <laughs> the Amtrak official Tumblr account would be obliterating you right now. Oh yeah. Saying that out loud. Would. Would. <laughs> uh, this, this is like some nice 
Yeah, yeah, dude, South. Daybreak 2.0, honestly, is like a real 2.0. Like, it's, it's looking like it's going to be like a real Please reading of to what the made Daybreak good and what didn't. Yeah, it's just so funny that they waited until right now to build the actual like, part of Daybreak that's dense instead of a single family home. Well, <laughs> they built the bad part first. Well, yeah. yeah, because you know how hard it is to build everything except... Uh, yeah. It's the California high-speed rail of uh, new urbanist developments. <laughs> So, Gateway 2.0 when? <laughs> it's called oh City Creek. <laughs> no, City Creek is like better than Gateway because it actually integrates with urban fabric. Crazy. Instead of just having a blank wall for like three blocks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, and there's stuff in it. Yes. Next station. <laughs> that would do it. And well, I'm. Daybreak. And, or not Daybreak. City Creek and the Gateway could do better at like actually engaging the outward. Street yeah, honestly, my faces, but... Those but street front you make on Street Creek are quite bad, even though there are stores there, most of them you can't get into. Yeah. One of them actually had a, a paper posted to the inside of their, like, permanently locked exterior door that said, Hey, due to City Creek rules, we can't let you in from Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, that's kind of like my title complaint about City Creek. Like, it's a good mall, but yeah. the Main Street frontage specifically is so bad. I've always just found it weird that the church owns it. <laughs> but that's an entirely separate West. show. Yeah. Yeah. Old up, and, up in heaven, there's a big commercial real estate department really doing, doing God's yeah. work. Which but, level of heaven? Are like people in you know, the top level allowed to engage in the you know, I, I feel like... So above the celestial actually. kingdom, there's... Um, <laughs> There's the, the, the Management. Wall, Wall Street. Yeah. Is you know, like, kind of I think that the, the only thing the LDS podcast. Church should be able exactly. to do is, like, I don't know, like, urbanist developments in Salt Lake. Like, you know, no churches or anything. They just, like, sell off all their churches and they build, like, five over ones or whatever. <laughs> Church office building. Yeah, except they could be like that one skyscraper in Chicago that has a Methodist church in the top of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have 95 State, which has a church in the bottom. Yeah. And like, that's mm, real. Yeah. Yes, yes, you know, yeah. like. If, so that's what that giant random blank. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. Learning. That's why that part of it is a different color, different texture. Mm. They even have a sign that says this is welcome. I think the. Oh, no shit. I think the church. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Church of Manhattan has a similar Next structure, station. like, you know, their temple stuff. They, you put them on the I think they have a temple that's like in a skyscraper mm-hmm. on the first, the church yeah, in Manhattan. In, in Manhattan. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, They're wanting to rebuild it, I think. Like, they want to make it more luxurious or something yeah. in Manhattan, but... It's right across the street from Lincoln Center. Yeah. Cool. Right off of the one. It sounds like we might have to we cover the underground the church. Market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good church urbanism, which may surprise you. Yes, it does surprise me. I, I have gone to church there before, and really? the interesting thing is that they have a big parking problem there, and the parking problem is that the hallways are lined with strollers. <laughs> <laughs> That checks out. That checks yeah. out. I I have pictures of it. I got like, like a stroller check room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm so fascinated to learn that. I love but that. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, uh, in Chinatown, that's where they have a church there. It's like a, just a garage, basically. It's really cool. Alright. A part of me is really scared that the church architecture podcast is going to outperform the Redline podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I am open to starting a third, what is this, 58th, uh, third podcast. <laughs> no, like, specifically discussing church architecture. You need to practice what you preach on uh, the Episcopal Church. Old Bingham Highway. Oh, yeah. Give, give me the mic. <laughs> You've got to practice what you uh, preach, like the Episcopal Church. I don't know, it's the... I don't remember the St. Mark's Church. Yeah, you need to turn that to like I don't know, like a skyscraper. Yeah, let's turn our 170-year-old building. Well, to a just skyscraper. do some yeah. New York stuff where you put a skyscraper on stilts over it. This okay. is. I would honestly be done with that though. Okay. You, you know, where this is like new urbanist, uh, transit-oriented church. <laughs> Also known as a church near where you live. I don't but what I will say is that we have the best transit access of like any church ever. So true, true. Good yeah. location. Not Good by location. our, not by our own, um, no choices that we just, <laughs> yeah. just happened. 
<laughs> you were there first. Yeah. <laughs> True. But yeah, no, I wanna I'm gonna visit the the Chinatown one and we'll stick that on the on the Turtle Podcast. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Chinatown in San Francisco, I I rode the uh, the Central Subway over Christmas. Whoa. So you rode the Central Subway. What did you think? Uh, as as a fan of of riding public transit, I thought it was too short. <laughs> <laughs> Real. But yeah, I well. Next station. I was when when we arrived at the the Chinatown station, and I looked around. I realized I was the only person, uh, only white person there. So obviously the the people in in uh, in the Chinatown are making heavy use of it. So like, what I will say about the Central Subway from like if you if you're staying in North Beach, right, which is where I've stayed the time that I was there. And you take the 30 to get downtown. A really good hack during rush hour is to get off the 30 in Chinatown and then go down and get on the Central Subway so you don't get caught in the absolute god awful traffic that oh, they yeah. have in the financial. It's district. a good spot for a subway, objectively. This just should, you know, actually continue to the other parts. Also, the escalators are so bloody long. Oh, it's not yeah. Even funny. It's very deep. It's like, you know. You have to, if if you're up at the surface level, you have to start heading down like ten minutes before the train leaves, so you can get I know, there. Right? <laughs> Which, I like, mean, yeah, the frequency on the thing. If you're if you're a fan of of uh, Reese Martin, he he, Can I say that? yeah, <laughs> he uh, uh, often points out that that's one of the things that plagues uh, really deep subways is the fact the that time. it takes so long to get down there. Meanwhile, New York. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the, the one, like, one of the redeeming qualities of Washington Park Max, another famous big, like, deep subway station. Those elevators just fall. Oh, yeah. yeah. They the yeah. surface down to the platform. Like, which works great. Seconds. Which works great for a low volume station like that. Yeah. And I, I love that the elevators, uh, instead of showing you floors, they show you feet. feet yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, I think that there's also a thing in the elevator that will show you, like, which, like, curate of rock you're in like this is the cretaceous period this yeah, is the- yeah that's, that's pretty cool they should do Man, that for like that like super deep uh like art extension they're doing oh or if they were doing i guess yeah it goes like, to the core of the earth so yeah. <laughs> but then you need like more elevators than subway yeah you, <laughs> for capacity reasons yeah you have you take like the two miles uh elevator up to Caltrain and so you can move from like I don't know wow. a subway that's a uh, commuter rail to a commuter rail that's uh, a subway they just yeah, need a, yeah. a, a vertical subway at that point to, to travel <laughs> Caltrain is I believe fully grade separated so <laughs> Caltrain is, no, no no on the penin- on part of the peninsula I should say that's yeah. some good parts that was a lie that separated. was a complete bullshit that I pulled up out <laughs> yeah, of the please ignore that I thought about that for two seconds longer and I realized in San Mateo. <laughs> yeah. We jump through to not build elevated transit. Oh my god. Like yeah, but like if you like see a train, like it's what gonna scare that? the people in Should San Jose who are like, ah. I don't know, like really like insane tech people. It's like it's like the mecca of like uh, kind of like tech workers who like I don't know love Elon Musk and. You may be asked to move. If they if they see a train, they will become scared because the only type of public transportation they can comprehend is pods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like oh my god, put, uh, where's the hyperloop? <laughs> what if we put in just like Helvetica bold, black text and a white gra- background? P.O.D. on the side of the train. <laughs> yeah, like... You know, VTA, this, white rail ridership, just goes through the roof. <laughs> yeah, like, the VTA it needs to be, like, I don't know, like, they need to make it, like, seem high-tech or something. They need to make, like... Put some TVs in it, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like... They, on, they're, like, oh, you know, this, uh... Flight rail line, it actually mines crypto for you as you ride. <laughs> the regen braking 
Towers the onboard crypto mining. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, that's so cursed. I, I heard a conspiracy that the Hyperloop was just to kill whale. I don't know that yeah. that's a conspiracy so much as the truth. Well, you have to say, you have to say it's a conspiracy. Just like, the gener- like this General Motors streetcar <laughs> yeah, conspiracy. It's a conspiracy, conspiracy yeah. but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Some work like some kind of like fake line right there. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's that's not the worst extension I've seen. <laughs> follow, follow the the freight stuff through the industrial park. Uh, do a 270 at the north end of Mountain View, and then just head down that old rail corridor. Yeah, sure. So you know, actually, like, it's interesting. Like, the, oh yeah, I should. Ju- I'm just like gonna go up to like all like the things and like write in my own lines like. <laughs> <laughs> the S line is going to connect up to uh, the U. Uh, sure. The green oh. line is going to go all the way through West Tell Valley. And they, and you know, Not like, riding it's the S line to the university. It's on so the map slow. now. They, they're forced to build it. Oh, yeah, that is how that works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Next station you do pay the taxes. West Georgia <laughs> yeah, this is my train. Yes. I live near the one of the 35 Max stations, and... It was, I think, all the way up to last year. They had those maps that showed 35 Max as a BRT line, kind of like how they do with the OGX and UVX nowadays. And I took a picture of it as like, look, here's a future West West Valley Green Line <laughs> extension. Oh. Yeah, I still don't get why they cut the Max. That one actually got like good ridership for low. Yeah, and the 35. Still it was gets confusing. Really yeah. yeah, it needs to. Re- I think the problem with the 35 Max, as opposed to our other BRTs, is that it had a really confusing service pattern because the 35 Max would run every 15 minutes on its express schedule, but there was also a local bus, which was just the 35, which would run every 30 minutes. So people would always be getting on the wrong one. So maybe they should have just consolidated into express only. Or perhaps yeah. that they should have run both of them at 15 minutes or greater and actually educated people on how to use an express service. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. In my valley. Yeah, let's just repaint them like the little OGX. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like whenever, like... West Jordan City Center, uh, Redwood Road. I don't know, like, with, like, the 35, like... I don't know, that might have been, like, the world's, like, fakest BRT. So, like, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I, I feel like it's, like, too embarrassing to have, like, pretended that was, like, a real BRT bus. So, Honestly, I don't know. it's a good thing, because they're kind of approaching it from the opposite end. Like, they took a bus and they made it a little bit better in some places, and so <laughs> they took a BRT and they made it crap. I don't know, the west side of the valley is really hard to get service to, like, if you wanted to have some rail service, because you do have the, you do have the Garfield branch from, like, Welby Junction. On but it doesn't line. go anywhere. It does. Uh, it goes to the... Uh, what you call the Olympic skating region? Yeah. Like, reach. I don't know yeah. how many people you get. Well, off that, that's but. not that's not what I mean. Like, there's just no way to get. Like, I'm not saying that you couldn't serve that line with you know tracks or front runner or whatever. It's just the trouble is getting the stuff to the places where there are jobs and other things yeah, after yeah. you serve it because you have to either go all, all the way, way south down. to get to the red line or all the way north to get to a line that UP probably doesn't want to sell. Although the, the West Valley does have a lot of good opportunity for like light rail light rail where it you know runs in or above the street or that yeah. makes me want to a, die they have a very strong hear me out they have a very strong arterial grid which is like the bane of everybody's existence if you want a bicycle there um, not too bad for the buses but a viable place to run rail if you're willing to shell out for strategic grade separation at a minimum yeah honestly Redwood Road elevated when <laughs> they, they should <laughs> I know if in the world with unlimited the budget, they should garden. just do an elevated rail on 3500 South. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be the ideal world solution, I think. Um, in the realistic world, I'm not sure. But, well, who says we have to be realistic? <laughs> well, and I think the other thing that we're finding out recently is that it may actually be cheaper to build elevated rail in this country than it is to build, or on this continent, I should say, than it is to build light rail just because... <laughs> I don't know exactly why, but it seems to be becoming a trend where it's cheaper to build things like SkyTrain than it is to build at-grade rail in, like, L.A. Yes. And, uh, yeah, spoke, spoken like a true Reese Martin fan. <laughs> uh, look, Reese Martin is a me fan, is really what's going on here. <laughs> oh, I'm getting introduced to Bruce, I think. No. Yeah, I, I do have to say a couple things on the 35 Max. Next um, I, I know the planner at UTA who is in charge of that, and that planner is very proud of the Max, 
and the fact that because UDOT was already reconstructing uh, oh. 35th South, uh, it only cost UTA a million dollars <laughs> to put the uh, the yeah. bus only lane in the I like of that. the right like way. That. And uh, from yeah, so the the, the, the whole reason for, for being very proud of that is because it was extremely cost effective, even if it was like the the least BRT of all BRTs. <laughs> well, like I said, you're taking a bus, you're making it a bit better in some ways. That is a really good way to be bus. It's like how the first part of the Silver Line in Boston costs almost nothing. Silver Line, what? Where? Uh, like the first part of uh, that Every was like, Every time. I don't know, like less than a hundred, like twenty million dollars or something, because it was just like nothing. Yeah, and then they built a tunnel for a bus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little wire. I mean, to be fair, Houston built an elevated structure that's like a half mile long exclusively for buses, so uh, it's not without precedent. This is my favorite station on the red line. Is it really? Yeah, I love, I love the Bingham Junction station because for the absolute most FOMA reason you can think of, and it's the most well-lit station at night, so <laughs> it, it helps a lot when you're trying to get trains in the middle of the night. So, uh, I mean, and it's also near the beginning of the freight train service. And it's also near the Top Golf. Oh yeah. Oh, I love Top Golf. A thing I've never played. <laughs> yeah. Suburb- I suburban zoning. I have no desire to. Yeah. Oh, and also not for housing towers. Yeah. I believe that, like, when, you know, uh, like Utah County, like, oh, yeah. like, like the city of Vineyard, it just like started existing out of nowhere. Because like one day we just got like a Top Golf there. Right. <laughs> we were, like, yeah. Oh, That's wow. how you know it's a real Top city. Golf to get the, I don't know. Now they're doing like that, like Utah, like city plan over there. And I don't know. I feel like Top Golf is really like innovating the urban structure of Vineyard. Like Vineyard is going to become like the urban center of all of Utah County Utah because County they put like, right. Top Golf there. Yeah, I didn't even know what a vineyard was until the infill station was built. I'm like, what is a vineyard? <laughs> what is Utah County? Well, isn't favorite? Jeff Speck doing Utah City though? Yes. And he even told me that when when he signed on to the project, he basically said, you guys have to do what I'm telling you to Otherwise do. Otherwise it's not going to work. Yeah, and he even had to threaten to walk on the project a couple times <laughs> because they like weren't listening to him. And he was basically saying, hey, if you guys want my name recognition, you've got to, you know, like make it walkable. And, yeah, so I'm I'm expecting some good things from from Utah City. Better or worse than the point? That's kind of hard to say because I still really haven't seen like right so far from what I've seen of the point. I would have to say that Utah City might end up being better. Part of it is because I haven't seen them hire Jeff Speck or anyone like Jeff Speck <laughs> to do it. So is the Jesse is seething right now. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> Jesse is seething right Wait, now. Wait, what are you seething <laughs> for? I uh, He's a famous I mean, like, point fan. Uh, like the plan oh. is like if for Utah City is like. I mean, like, extremely ambitious, so, like, I don't know, I, I, I want, want it real to be, like, built out, out so it, cause it'd just be really funny if, like, there were, like, high-rise, like, apartment buildings in Vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's another, like, another argument for the Utah Lake Ferry from Saratoga Springs to Vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. Utah Lake Ferry. Yeah. Yeah, they need to... <laughs> No, but they have to build, like, the big old highway over uh, Utah Lake. Oh, yeah, because that's be, like, a much most, better idea. It'll be, like, the world's, like, most expensive uh, public works project. Yeah, and destroy the ecosystem and of the lake as well. Utah Ooh. Lake of all you, you We're trying to really build, like, Florida. we're trying to destroy all of our lakes. We're going for completionism in Utah, you know. Destroying Salt Lake, done. that wasn't enough. We need to destroy Utah Lake, too. Uh, if there's other lakes, we'll destroy them, too. Our what, UDOT's 100% oh, speed run of destroying, destroying the environment. Powell, so, yeah. <laughs> We're completionists. Uh, real. Um, is Utah City any farther along in the planning process overall than the point? Because I know the point's got, you know, a bunch of study docu- documents out, but they're mostly just people spurting generic build 
new build stuff. I don't see a lot in the way of concrete plans that actually yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. Well, let's take have Jesse take that. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'll say this. I think in the debate between the Utah City and the Point, it, it comes down to who has more money behind it. Oh. oh. I feel and like... the point is the legislature's project. Yes. And I feel like the point is just going to keep getting money shoved into it until it's some sort of gateway monstrosity <laughs> that just consumes the entire South Valley. <laughs> well, and they're going to build the Statue of Responsibility there, too. Yes. The... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the giant hand in the sky that looks slightly strange. Have you not seen that? Okay, you're here. Pull up the statue of responsibility so Alex can see it. This is weird. As I said, I have my own demons. It's meant to be like what, 280 feet tall as well. Like it would be the tallest building south of Salt Lake City, I think. Really? Uh huh. It's supposed to be like the Statue of Liberty of Salt Lake or something. Yes. The Statue of Liberty, but conservative. I don't know. No, it's to teach people that they have responsibility to society. The statue that was rejected by San Diego, and now they're sending it to Utah, and Utah's just gobbling it up. Because we're stupid and have an inferiority complex to the West Coast, because we are inferior to the West Coast. Imagine if they build it, and it starts raining, and it's a American Oh, yeah. Well, is it going to be in the middle of a roundabout? I'm very like much down with that. Yeah. Like, it could be like, this could be Utah's Trafalgar Square. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, these are the worst comparisons I've ever heard in my life. We're not supposed to be going 65 here, we are we? We can. Can, can we? we? I did not know yeah, that. Didn't they upgrade this the as way. a test track when they were doing the oh. construction? By the way. Oh, there, there it is. Oh, we just missed <laughs> the anal building. Oh, it's just sad. <laughs> Hashtag not my anal building. Uh, am I the only one getting off? Should I take off my recorder at the central point? I'm tempted to get drone shots here, but I may go to okay. uh, front runner. Front runner. Yeah, I'm going to take it off now. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, the, we can share if you have anything switch. to say. Just let me know. Flip the hold switch to the middle. Yeah, flip the hold switch. And then and press then record press so record. the red light turns off. And then turn it off. Okay. Wait, no. Okay. You I, already, just, I already wait. No, now it's okay, off, now it's and then because okay. you have to unpress the hold button before you, and then so you're I think good to go. Utah Railway does spring operations here. I don't know about it because I've never actually caught Utah Railway on this portion of the track sign. Okay, I always see like the exact same hopper cars. Yeah, so I'm not sure how active it. I read a UTA study and they said that the red line portion at daybreak gets like 176 trains every 100 days, and it's like. One tenth of that Access on the main line to downtown. So, so what like, you're saying is we should run the blue line 24/7. Yeah. I think you could get Pretty away much, with it. Yeah. You would have to get rid of some of the last customers on the route, but I think sure. you could get. Well, away once with we it. switch, you know, the blue line to the airport, of course. Well, actually, actually, the yes, main thing good. we need to do is get rid of the customers up till like right, about talking. 21st. Oh, I'm getting off at Central Point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, up till about 21st, so UTA can have 24-7 rail yard access on the northern end of the system, mm. which is one of the main blockers for doing 24-7 service on, say, the Green Line. Like, honestly, south of that should be more of a long-term goal. You know, rock. I, I would love if they brought back the Utah and Northern Rail. Well, I can't say rail way. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm um, coming up through low hey, and then up in the idle. Finding a track? On anything. I, I'm Next station. Okay, my like, underrated first opinion is that we should use UTA equipment to run a party train to win over. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. You know, I don't know, like, I, I'm just, like, imagining, like, Amtrak, they should do, like, uh, Wendover to Salt Lake, because, I mean, like, the rail already exists, and, like, th there would be people going on that. Yeah, why is there not a stop on the Zephyr? They tried it back in 2014. Yeah? Did it work? No, I don't think they got enough funding for it, oh. so they, they yeah, tried to like do it. they refused to give, like, yeah. it would be, like, the only useful destination. I know, right? <laughs> I'm still holding the opinion of rerouting the train over the lake because I want and I want to go over the lake. That line would be short enough that they would have to get state support. Yeah, it has to be longer than 750 miles. Yeah, silly so roll. But uh, thank you, Priya. <laughs> yeah. 
And I will like to point out that the fastest we went, I had this measure, the fastest we went was between Fashion Place and Murray Central at That's 65. Sad. We only went 62 anywhere else. Huh. I've seen us go, I've clocked in at 67 in the mid journey. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the oh, fastest. Yeah. I've, I've seen it go uh, up to 65 on the park that goes out by the airport. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think yeah. that part's great. I think they will, actually, they'll also do it on the Draper line sometime if they get an all SD160 consist. Yeah. Yeah. Those things like are magic. terrifying at 65. <laughs> I, think like, so <laughs> I think I've been on a 70 mile per hour train to the airport one time. I think, they, I, think I had someone. I, I, well, crying. you know, one time I was on a five mile per hour train from Salt Lake Central. You know, like. You're all talking about the fastest train, but what about the slowest? That would be the oh, S yeah. line. Yeah. 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 No, Northern Blue Line beats the S line. Like, I, I swear. <laughs> Whenever I'm in like that part of the Blue Line, it's like the S line. Yeah, don't tell Devin we're we're shit talking the S line. He's like the world's only like S line supporter. Next <laughs> station. Feels like. I actually, yeah, probably. <laughs> I have to say, it's uh, it's nice to be picked up by a million dollar vehicle once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to miss that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So they want to do an S-Line at this point, like, instead of making like, a front-runner station there. So, uh, would you say that again into the mic so I can respond yeah. to it? I, are they, I, I'm not sure what they're doing with the point anymore with the transit there, but like, are they wanting to do like an S-Line structure? I, I've, li- I've listened to your previous podcast on this, I think. So UDOT has finally decided to do the right thing and build light rail around Point of the Mountain. However, they have decided to do it in the dumbest way possible. Um, it's it's going to be like, first of all, like the longest above 5% grade on any light rail system in the U.S. It's going to be like a half mile of 7% grade, which is quite bad. Um, Great for foaming, though. Great for foaming. (laughs) Feel bad for those drivers, though. (laughs) Oh, that's going to be stressful, especially in the winter. Um, So instead of using the the kind of round curve that they have in Draper, they're going to build it from Draper Front Runner Station. Yeah, existing, already graded and everything. Um, They're going to build it from Draper Front Runner through the point, then down to Lehigh, Possibly without a connection to the rest of the track system, although I have heard that they've amended their plans for a, quote, non-revenue connector. Potential. There's potential, yes. Yeah. So the good thing about this is, A, they're not paving the corridor to put buses on it, which would be a stupid waste. Yeah, that would be silly. The other good thing is that they are going to be using that high-quality alignment to get from the point of the mountain down to Lehigh, and then theoretically later we're set up pretty well for an extension. And if they build the non-revenue connector, then we've got one of the two tracks we need to get the rest of the system. Well, and I, I mean, there are ways to kind of ameliorate the stupidity of this decision. Um, for example, if you extend the red line far enough south and back to the back to the east a ways, you could connect it up and it could be... But overall, I think it's kind of a silly idea to, like, build an entirely independent line to serve. And it's not expected to get very many riders. Wouldn't so. it make the most sense to just move the Draper Front Runner Station? Yes. Because like, yes. that's right next to the yes. point, I think, the Front Runner Yes. Yeah. They should do that day one. Yes. Yeah. But I think they want to build a new one and then like spend $400 million on double tracking to make well, it work. Because they, well, because they were like, we good. can't possibly get rid of the old one. Yeah, it's a parking ride. Oh, it's... Because it's got eBay. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely couldn't just run a bus there. If you want the bike. It has the big parking lot that the corruption no happened. Creep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get rid of our corruption yeah. thing. Yeah, that's that's going to be on the uh, National Register of Historic Places. <laughs> I don't know why, like, you know, Great I always feel, like, so confused that, like, BJ has, like, such this, like, strong, like, I don't know, almost, like, obsession with, like, the Draper area. They, they like, constantly be want, they, like, constantly want to, like, add more stuff over there and, like, I don't know. As far as tracks? Yeah. Well, because that's because if they're not going to do a northern extension up to Farmington on Highway 89 or something, which would be great. Which they're not. This is one of the next logical places to do a suburban tracks extension because of that corridor that runs down to Lehigh and beyond. Yeah, it's just like confusing because they're doing that, but they're not like using the corridor. They're going and building like a weird little spur. This is because that's from what UDOT and the legislature Draper. want to build. Well, yeah, the like, point you because people we can't have walk to connect across it the to, uh, front r- to um, Draper Front Runner because like like office workers use there. the Front Runner, but like the people use tracks. Okay, yeah, I'm like, gonna we, cut you off because we are nearing Central Point and. This 
this is yeah. the end of line for us. So, thank you for listening to this podcast and all of our terrible audio and random rambling discussions. Uh, High quality episode. If you're listening, if you're listening on YouTube, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're on Spotify or iTunes, please remember to follow and leave us a rating. We'd like to thank our patrons, many of whom are in the room right now. Goodbye. Everyone say goodbye into a microphone. Goodbye. 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 See you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>